World Series of Poker main event. The arena where the best players in the world make their names and cement their reputations. Pass the sugar! But after several grueling days of poker, many of the game's biggest stars have fallen away. Yeah, baby. Leaving only a handful of pros to march on. Get the fight again, that's all I want. They face the challenge of brash new faces beginning to make their presence felt. Oh, how y'all like that, boys? I want your chips over here. Players who show little caution. It's time to get crazy. And even less fear. Woo! Send him out on the stretcher. Players like Dimitri Nobles. I plan on being at the final table. This new breed has left a few remaining pros with more questions than answers. Is a pro ever going to win it again? Probably not. I mean, I mean, they're just outnumbered. Will a new face <gasps> once again be crowned the king of poker? Whoa! Still alive. The battle continues. <laughs> Welcome to the 2006 World Series of Poker presented by Milwaukee's Best Life. The Rio Poker Room, which was for several days filled to capacity, is now down to just 481 players. All right, too many chips in the table. But as the field continues to shrink, it only helps the odds of our remaining pros, such as top tournament player Annie Duke. 2005 Player of the Year, Alan Cunningham, and the reigning world champion, Joseph Hashem. Can they survive another day? We're about to find out. Hello, everybody. I'm Lon McCarron, along with Norman Chad. The main event storyline is shifting from mere day-to-day -day survival to position, specifically chip position. And indeed, it's time to take note of the big stacks in the room. And Norman, one of the biggest stacks, is at our featured table. Top pros Alan Cunningham, Annie Duke, and defending champion Joseph Hashem are still left, but they're all looking up at one Dimitri Nobles. That's right, you heard me, Dimitri Nobles. He used to sell cars for a living, but tonight he's got a lot of chips for sale. Dimitri will be the center of attention at this featured table. He was once our chip leader and is just off the lead in second place with 650,000 chips. What a World Series debut he's having. He's from the ATC school lawn. He'll play any two cards. <laughs> On the Milwaukee's Best Light Pocket Cam, Queen Four of Hearts. Dimitri Nobles 16. comes out and raises it to 16,000. He says, I've got the chips. Come and get them. Blinds are at 2,000 and 4,000, a 500 chip ante. To George Danzer, pocket aces for the student from Germany. <laughs> you look like you ought to be in the movies, man. I like that jacket. You always wear a scarf to work? Every time I, I bluff, I have to, how do you say it? Uh, swallow. 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 And when the scarf's on, nobody can see it. <laughs> Lon, I own several ascots for my summer bluffing needs. <laughs> 50. Oh, Dancer 50. now re-raises with his aces to 50,000. Back to Dimitri Nobles now as everyone else folds. That is a dashing look. Make it 100. Nobles now is playing the big stack poker that only he can at this table. Uh, he's raising and he has squad douche. Are you from Scandinavia? I don't, <laughs> where, where, I don't even know where Scandinavia is. Scandinavians supposedly play very loose, so Dimitri is an honorary Scandinavian. I always catch somebody. Copenhagen. I'm all in. Wow. <laughs> Maybe Dimitri's net was bigger than he thought. He caught himself. Dimitri momentarily speechless. Nice and Nobles will give it up. He was smart enough to give it up when he knew he was beat. I guess I'm not from Scandinavia. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. You re raised with nothing and then had to fold. You are from Scandinavia. Well, watch me. I will try it again. I've played so many guys from Scandinavia already. Watch me. I will try it again. The salesman speaks the truth. He will try it again. We are now down to 460 players in this main event field, spread over 50-odd tables. The average chip count in the room is just under 200,000 chips. Let's go to the outer tables. We find Daniel Negrano, whose chip count is about half the average. Daniel right now is hooked up in a hand with Jamie Gold, another new face who has come on strong recently. And Daniel is going to push all in for his last 79,500. Everywhere Daniel looks, he sees strangers, and they've been taking his chips most of the time. But right here is all in, is not called, and he survives. I wasn't for you to look at. <laughs> Daniel has been forced to move all in with that low stack, and he'll live to play another hand. 
Elsewhere we find Umberto Brenes from Costa Rica. He is putting in a bet against Prahlad Friedman, known best for his internet prowess. And here comes the card protecting Shark, Umberto's best friend so far in the main event. I believe if Prahlad had a bow and arrow right now, he would use it. <laughs> I know exactly what you have. Oh, hungry! Hungry! That's how you make a bet, Lon. <laughs> how about this? I'll tell you your hand. Exactly. You have a king of spades and a king of hearts. And Prahlad folds <laughs> to the supposed kings. Umberto is entertaining or exasperating, depending on your point of view. So in this battle between two World Series bracelet winners, the first round goes to Umberto Brennis, whose chip stack is a little healthier as he hunts for his first main event championship. Welcome back inside the Rio Poker Room and the World Series of Poker presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Top prize, 12 million bucks. I told Dimitri he has his visor upside down. He said, no, I don't. He might be right. Is anybody like surprised that they're here still? Like 8,700 people. With his style of play, Dimitri has to be a little surprised, though if you ask, he might not tell you the truth. The former car salesman is not afraid to use his mouth to keep him guessing. <laughs> I was in the auto industry for 10 years. I feel like I can relate a lot of poker to the car business. It's really like selling cars. That's not what I'm talking about, bro. I got to make you believe what I want you to believe. Go ahead and fold it. Let it go. That'd be your best play. I know if I have a person that's wanting to buy right now, I'm going to have to push them. Or I know if I have a lay down, somebody who's just going to do whatever I say. Don't do it. I'm selling the whole time. You just got to figure out which way I'm selling. Send him out on a stretcher. The girls, the girls, they love me. I think people are noticing me because of my mouth at the table. I'm, I'm tired of stacking them up. She called me hun. I really do hope that puts a, a target on my back. You know, I want them, I want them to want to beat me. Keep pushing them this way. We're gonna have a good time. Because I want to get ahead. And once I get ahead, I feel like I, if I got a big stick, I'm gonna swing it at you and you probably don't want to get hit. Yeah, I'm having fun. I'm having a real good time. <laughs> Sometime you take that big stick and end up whacking yourself. Dimitri reminds me of a lot of young internet players, very good at accumulating chips, then very reckless when they get them. Nobles got away from the car biz. He now runs a music and entertainment management company. He's looking at five deuce. And is he reaching for chips? <laughs> Man, it's hard to let this one go. He will let it go. Well, it's five deuce. No one knew it, so I don't know what type of selling he's doing there to anybody. Whole cards of Kevin Daly from London, England. Queen Jack. Daly's nickname is Pocket Seven Deuce, so he's the real ATC player. Daly will raise it up three and a half times the big blind to 14,000. Now to George Danzer, <laughs> Jack Ten of Spades. I call. Danzer's going to make the call. Danzer got in here the old-fashioned way. He paid $10,000 for his seat. Uh, he was fleeced. Heads up now to the flop, and it is six jack, 10. Both pair their jack, but Danzer got jacks up. Daly first to act. And it's a big act. He makes a 25,000 with his pair of jacks. 80. And Danzer now with his two pair raises to 80,000. Good instincts again from Danzer. <laughs> All in. All in? I call. All in and a call. Wow. How could Daly go all in? Lon, this is like an internet tournament only with live chips. They should give everyone a mouse and a mouse pad. You just click and push all in again and again. And Daly had a lot of chips to push in, and Danzer now with a huge opportunity to get very rich. Give me a queen. Turn card now. It's a king. Daly got some outs. Daly with more hope than he should have. A king or a queen would be good for him now, or an ace or a nine would give him a straight. River card. Oh, he got the oh, queen. Yes. Daly comes from behind and gets Queens up to double up through George Danzer. 
<laughs> er ruft mich mit Dame Bube für 200.000. He said the Brit got bloody lucky and I'm none too pleased. I picked up some German when I was working on an oil rig in Berlin. <laughs> What a big win for Kevin Daly who seems a little embarrassed about it. Okay. <laughs> Let's have some fun. You're not having fun yet, huh? <laughs> no, until now. Now I'm starting with the fun. That was getting warm. Getting a pot of him and giving it to him. So now I can start. Yeah, why would you want to do that? I swear that visor is upside down. <laughs> All right, let's get out into the room on the KFC Snacker Cam. We could keep track of almost everyone left in the 2006 main event. And we catch up with Annie Duke, who seems to have rebounded nicely from a bumpy day three. I'm so confused. I feel like flipping a coin. That's what I did on my second marriage. Who won? <laughs> there were no winners. Annie will fold her cards there. Next, we find Alan Cunningham, the 2005 Player of the Year. He's hooked up in a hand against Eric Freiberg, and Cunningham is moving all in. And this isn't some internet all-in hooligan. It's Alan Cunningham. All in and a call. Freiberg makes the call. 110,000 chips, and Cunningham turns over pocket aces. Good luck. And it's pocket tens for Freiberg. Now the flop and another race for Cunningham. It's Alan Cunningham. Turn card three of hearts and Freiburg is drawing dead going to the river. Alan Cunningham will double up. Why did he double up, Lon? Because it's Alan Cunningham. You are a quick study. So Freiburg will pay off Cunningham, whose best finish in the main event was 27th place. The winner of the big one in 1983 right there, Tom McAvoy all in with pocket eights against Keir Fitzgibbon. Luck, we go. Fitzgibbon made the call holding ace jack. Now the flop, and Fitzgibbon hits his jack in that flop. And McAvoy now all but out of here. His best chance will be an eight. Now the turn card is a deuce. One card to come. The six will send the former champ home. And McAvoy disappointed in 371st place, but it's the first time he's cashed in the main event since winning it in 83. And so Joe Hashem is the only past winner of the main event still with chips here this year. Hashem has said he is all in, so another former champion with his tournament life on the line. He's going against 21-year-old Brian Hansen. This is our degree all-in moment. Joe Hashem all in with ace queen against the Come pocket on, give five. Me one time. Look at the brave call he just made with a pair of fives. I don't like the tone of that comment. One time. You know, I think he must have gotten something at least one time last year to win the main event. Now the flop. Yes. Hashem picks up no two price. more Did queen's trips for the defending oh, champion. I just hold it five. Give me one. Nice. Hashem gets lucky. If he can avoid a five now, he will double up. Turn card is a deuce. Hashem needs to survive one more card. The river card, another spade, gives Hashem a winning flush and the degree check mark over Brian Hansen. Somebody come and, come and give me a hug, come on. No, you, you. I'm coming to hug you. He gets a hug and doubles up. It's good to be king. The degree all-in moment is brought to you by Degree for Men, protects men who take risks. The World Series of Poker presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Main event. Welcome back inside the Rio. Dimitri Nobles doing what he does best, still talking the talk, trying to get an edge against his opponents. You know, it always happens when somebody close to me gets busted. Same thing with me. Really? It's usually to my left and my right. Yeah. I guess it's possible they will knock each other out on the same hand. Under 400 players left in the field, and it still skews very young. There is 21-year-old Mike Lynn, one of the youngest players, of course, still in the tournament. Brenton Goulding has outlasted his father, and 91-year-old grandfather Victor Goulding, who both played in this main event. And those are the chips of 21-year-old Eric Molina, perhaps doing better than any other young player. Started the day tied eighth on the chip count, picking up another big pot. And his dad, Roy, is here. Well, Eric's going to make a rapid rise on the chart there. Roy Molina spreading the good word of his son's success to the other family members. And another player whose father is here in support of him is 35-year-old Ken Jacobs. He is the son of pro player Tom Jacobs. Tom Jacobs won a World Series bracelet in 2003 and has made two main event final tables, finishing second in 1992. Raise 40,000. Tom is watching his son Ken make a raise of 40,000 to amateur Dan Nassif from St. Louis. All the cards already on the board. 
Nassif will make the call. And Jacobs will show a set of deuces and win the hand. So Ken Jacobs will do his dad proud and pick up a lot of chips from Dan Nassif. No doubt Ken has picked up a lot of the finer points of the game from his father. My name is Ken Jacobs. I'm 35 years old and I'm from Denver, Colorado. When I introduce myself in the poker rules, I just say that I'm Ken, you know, Tom Jacobs' son. I came in second in the main event in 92. It's a long time ago, but it seems like it was yesterday. I just remember the glory of it all. From then on, it was something I want to accomplish. Yeah. This year, it looks like I have a pretty good chance. I attribute it all to my father. Yes! My biggest accomplishment in poker is being able to teach Ken how to play. Keep your mind in the game. Play your game. My dad taught me how to play at a young age. It's just kind of a game that's been handed down, kind of like if your father's a doctor, you'll become a doctor. Well, my father's a poker player, and so that's what I do. I think it's just the beginning of what you're going to see from him, because he is one of the greatest players on the planet today. And I know them all. I've played against all of them. I would love to get to the final table in this event, because I want to attribute it all to my father. I'm doing it for him. You know, my father taught me how to fish when I was growing up, and to this day, every time I nick myself and draw blood when baiting a hook, I think of him. <laughs> All right, let's get back to our feature table. The blinds at 2,000 and 4,500 chip ante for each player. <coughs> Dimitri Nobles has been table captain. Eight, seven of diamonds. And he's going to raise it up to 16,000. Come on, let's dance, baby. He's looking for action. You still okay, man. You play good enough to make it. <laughs> You're all right. His favorite foil so far has been this man, George Danzer, ace king of diamonds. That is a dashing look. He does bring some European flair to the World Series. Make it 50. And he again is going to raise nobles to 50,000. For a moment, I thought he was going to confess to some serial crime. <laughs> Action folds around two nobles, and he makes an easy casual call. For the way Dimitri plays, suited connectors is like pocket aces for the rest of us. <laughs> Heads up now, Nobles and Danzer, and the flop is 7-5-4. Nobles pairs his 7 and picks up a straight draw. Nobles first to act. Molly. And moves all in. Give me that 50. Can you count it down? Give me that 50. Okay. <laughs> Give me that 50. Um, Give it to me. Say I fold and throw it in. I fold. Well, I can say it. Danzer should be able to say it. Let it go. Can be, you beat one pair? Be easy. Be easy. Can you beat one pair? Danzer can't beat one pair. No, this is an easy fold for Danzer. It would be for all his chips. Your TV debut wasn't very long. <laughs> I'd call for just for that comment. Danzer really has no choice. I mean, this is like bad dinner theater. He's not calling. Ah, today's your lucky day. Oh, yeah, yeah. Danzer yeah, folds. Yeah, 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 yeah. Show him what you got. I can't even Go show ahead, him. Show I don't him. want to embarrass him. All right. You'll we'll see it on TV. <laughs> Horrible lay down. Horrible. If Dimitri ever knocks on your door and asks we'll to play three card Monty Lon, tell him you are not home. <laughs> Re raise me. What's up? Please. Dimitri Noble's got Danzer's chips there. Now no. he wants to take away his confidence. Back inside the Rio, you've seen a lot of the very young players in this field, but a few solid veterans are still making some noise, quite show. literally. <laughs> Remember, this guy, no finish today. This. Once again, Umberto Brennis giving the business to Prahlad Friedman. Looks like Prahlad is warming up to the Umberto Brennis Cabaret. Three shows nightly. And Jeffrey Lissandro, another veteran pro who loves to intimidate his foes, pushing a bet towards Hui Wen. And Wen strikes back. He's going to raise it to 50,000. Lissandro won a World Series circuit title in 2005. All in. And Lissandro now with the ultimate bet all in to Hui Wen. <laughs> I know you got Ace King. Lissandro apparently not worried about Ace King. <laughs> when afraid to look at Jeffrey and kicks in the cards. So Lissandro will take the pot. 
And show, you're right, Norman, pocket aces. So Lissandro with a nice bunch of chips to add to his stack. There is Daniel Negrano, who also loves to talk, but more to gain information than to intimidate, yeah, hooked up against Ruben Peters. You don't have much of a hand, though. You don't. That's pretty obvious. We could have just saw a flop and played nice, nice. Actually, he doesn't look like he has much of a hand. Peters has bet enough to put Daniel Negrano all in. Let me think about this one. You pulled the sixes in already? Boy, Daniel really must think he's weak if he's considering calling with this. It's my absolute favorite hand. My favorite, favorite hand. But Daniel's rags can't beat hardly anything. Bring it to me one time, favorite hand. And Daniel will make his stand and risk everything. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Hold the 10-7. I knew you had nothing. We could have just saw a flop and played nice, nice. If Peters hits his cards, he can knock off one of the best. I got the 10-7. That's his favorite hand, and I'm always backing him? Don't do it to me, 10-7. You never let me down before, ever. Ever. You never let me down. Dan Negrano with his tournament life at stake. It's He's right. good through the flop. How's the deuce now? Just put the 10 out. Make it simple. Oh, okay. And now the turn card. It's a queen. Daniel's still alive. No nine, no six. A nine or a six would knock out Negrano. Ah! And it's a Jack yeah! Daniel lives. Worst hand I ever made. For 10-7. Thanks, Thanks, boss. This is great. 10-7 never let me down. Bring it. I got the nuts. What do you think? I got 10-7. Take your aces, take your kings, I'll take 10-7. Daniel was gambling with that 10-7, but he's got another passion that is taking up more and more of his time, one that also includes a little gamble. Golf is the perfect companion to being a poker player. Oh, that was perfect. Winning money on the golf course, specifically from Doyle Brunson. Bingo. And Barry Greenstein. It's so much sweeter than winning it anywhere else. I'm partnered with Eric Lindgren. We're playing even against Barry and Doyle. Daniel is obsessed with golf. He's been found practicing at two in the morning. Oh, please. <laughs> May not get out. R. Thank you. My partner hit it right down the middle. I, who would have believed that? We're in trouble, buddy. Oh, my partner's falling apart. I chose to have a few drinks to celebrate last night because uh, Daniel told me we had nothing to worry about today. Just show up, and he's going to carry me. Hey, that's what you do when you're 30 years old. Doyle will be in bed at 11 with milk and cookies. This is milk, this is cookies. <laughs> I just give him money right now because we have no chance at all. Oh, yeah. Go right into the houses. Uh-oh. Hopefully we can find it, though. Quickly. Yeah, now we got a shot. We won the money. 25 a man. That'll pay for a couple buy-ins. We proved that we were able to, to beat them at their own game, though. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Although he's short-stacked, Daniel has outlasted all his golfing buddies here at the main event. The sick thing is, I think he'd rather be on the golf course right now. <laughs> Back now to our featured table. $12 million going to our winner this year. Dimitri Nobles has been the man of the hour. Lee Court. Yeah, at his first World Series of Poker. Pocket aces. Uh, I love the smell of aces in the morning, or whatever time it is. It smells like victory. 8,000. He's going to make it 8,000. Now to Dimitri Nobles. Jack nine off suit. Dimitri loves the smell of any two cards, ATC. <laughs> Folds around to Danzer. Danzer's got a couple of diamonds, 9-5. Those are barely connecting suitors, Lon. From the big blind, cost him 4,000 more, so three to the flop. Court leading with the pocket aces. The flop now, 7-4-10, not much there, but Nobles gets a straight draw. Danzer first to act. He missed the flop. He checks. 20,000. 20,000 chip bet from Lee Court. 
And Nobles right behind him. If you chase too many inside straights, Lon, eventually you're sitting on someone's front porch playing a ukulele. Danzer folded, now heads up. Nobles pairs his jack, but he still comes up short to the aces of court. 40,000. Lee's going to ratchet it up. 40,000. And Dimitri beats him into the pot. That is a quick call. Always bang, bang from Dimitri. That sometimes unnerves you when you make a bet. River card now is a queen. Ensures court's aces are best. He gets the check mark. <laughs> Dimitri nonchalantly humming. All in. And court is going to push now with the aces. Dimitri's fast and loose, but I think that bet's got to shut him down. He said all in, I think. Did you say all in? All in. I call. He calls. Ouch. What a misstep. Court takes a huge pot off Dimitri. Yes! Woo! I bagged the elephant. How much you got? I bagged the 16, elephant? Is he going to mount Dimitri's head on the wall over his fireplace? Quite a stumble for Nobles. Bad call, Dimitri. That's what I was waiting for. I'm gonna snap. I'll get him back. Court gathering up a big chunk of Dimitri's stack. Maybe it's time for him to put the visor right side up. Dimitri's style got him those chips, but it really bit him when he failed to get away from a losing hand. Ugh. Back inside the Rio, hey, Dimitri hey. Nobles has stepped away from the table hey, and is right? on the phone. Maybe he called the poker crisis hotline. I hear you, man. They got me at the feature table, man. I done off a bunch of chips. That's the best call he's made all day. I've spread 400,000 in chips across the table. <laughs> so I'm going to just type. I'm going to and just wait for, wait for some hands. I'll holler at you. All right, all right. Next hand I play will be aces, kings, or queens. Ha! That'll be the day. Dimitri, the one-time chip leader, has a lot of makeup work to do, especially considering what the new chip leader has. After starting the day with just about a half a million chips, Jamie Gold has been on the run of a lifetime and now has almost three million chips. Are you kidding me? Almost three million at this stage? Gold trying to put Mike McLean all in. I'll give you one chance to save yourself. Boy, he looks agonized. I don't like you anymore. McLean. I liked you a few minutes ago. Doesn't want to lay it down. You're going to like me a lot when I show you the hand that you wish you. McLean folds it. You're going to be very happy. Is that good enough? Jamie shows him a full house. I like you again. Jamie Gold has now gone over the three million chip mark. That is almost ten times the chip average in the room. On the other end of the chip count is Mike Lynn in a hand right now with Whit Brayton. Brayton with queens, Lynn with tens, and Lynn down to his last 110,000 chips. And they go all into the pot. Michael, as you may recall, is the cancer survivor who has his mom, Liz, watching every hand he plays. And Witt will make the call and put Lynn at risk. And that means Lynn will need a 10 or an 8, or he's going home. And now the river card. It's a 3. Brayton Excellent. wins the hand and knocks off young Mike Lynn. And as usual, his mom Liz right there to console him, but not a bad chunk of change for the 21-year-old World Series rookie. Elsewhere, we it pick up on 27-year-old Brian Mikon. I am all in. All in, table 153. Brian turned a seven high straight. He's pushing against Reza Zand, who caught two pair on the flop. I'm going to pull the thriller dance if I win, too. Either way. Thriller dance. Maybe there should be a cover charge. <laughs> and Reza will make the call. So Brian Mikon now at risk. Uh, thriller dance. But he's ahead. Boy, he should pay us. And didn't he say he'd wait till the hand was over? Just Jay, what am I drawing against? You do have outs, of course. Zan does have outs. He has two pair. This is gambling. Zan needs a nine or a three to knock out Mikon. River card now is a jack, and yes! Mikon survives his all-in and doubles his chip stack at the expense of Reza Zan. The self-proclaimed king of all degenerates, Brian Mikon loves to have a good time at the table. My last name is Mikon, Brian the Icon, Mikon. And everybody calls me Mikon. It's being branded like Madonna, just one name, like, hey, I'm Mikon. All in. Hold for it. I'm the king of all the degenerates. Donkey one. Ah! <laughs> I was never the nine to five guy. 
When I was real young, my mom used to tell me, if you ever want to make any money and do well in this world, you're going to have to dress in a suit and go to work and work a nine to five. And I'm like, well, what if I don't want to? She's like, then you can be a trash man. I one day wandered over to a poker table and said, hey, what's the highest game you got going on? And you know, I knew I didn't know what I was doing then, but uh, the game just intrigued me. I raised. I've lost and won insane sums before. Do you often gamble till your last dollar is gone? <laughs> my mom's like, is this your life's work? Like, is this really what you're gonna do? And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, this is my life's work. Frankly, I'd like to see him in a suit picking up garbage. And this guy's got a mother? I don't think so. I want to talk to the young lady. All right, let's get back to our featured table here at the World Series of Poker, presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Dimitri Nobles has toned down his bravado since shipping stacks of chips to various opponents, including the dashing George Danzer. Yes. Ace Queen of Clubs. Lonnie, you know, I'm starting to grow very fond of looking call, at eh? George Danzer. <laughs> Dancer announces a raise. <laughs> He's going to make it 15,000 with his ace queen. I even like the way he bets. Nice motion. Players behind him fold. Back to Dimitri Nobles, who promised to tighten up. Well, I'm sure he meant it at the time he said it. Queen, 10, offsuit. <laughs> I'll play with you. He's going to play. He can't help himself. All right, so two players to the flop. Dancer in the lead, big time. His ace queen against the queen ten of nobles. It's just me and you. I could see a buddy picture with these two guys. You know, maybe a Harold and Kumar thing. <laughs> Here we go to the flop. It is seven six seven rainbow. Dancer keeps his advantage. Now that flop misses both of them as far as it can miss them. A check from Dancer. Check. And Dimitri decides not to posture for once. All right, turn card is a deuce. Danzer keeps his lead. That was no help to Nobles. Is it? Check from Danzer. 15. Dimitri's got to bet 15,000. It's time to posture. <laughs> Boy, Dimitri is fun to watch play. Cool. Danzer with the ace kicker will make the call. A little concern on Nobles' face this time. Now the river card. Both players now with queens up, but Dancer gets the check mark with a higher kicker. 50. And Nobles is going to bet 50,000 after Dancer checked. Dimitri thinks he hit a good card, but he didn't. <sighs> Go ahead and start pushing all in. Dancer all in. pushes. Who starts pushing? I call. <laughs> you call? I have ace queen. Ace queen is good. And Dimitri spreading more chips around the table. Trying to bluff the turn. You shouldn't do that. Then you get caught on the river. Upside down hat, upside down thinking. He began the day with 650,000 chips, but has sunk to less than 200,000. Dimitri Nobles is stuck in reverse. The World Series of Poker Championship Moments. Oh, talk about evil eye, Norm. Well, when the tournament started in 2004, I, I definitely thought I had a chance. And there's the biggest chip stack in the state being protected by the fossils of fossil man, Greg Raymer. Greg Raymer knocks off a second player here at the championship table. Fossil man is on fire. Presto! Even though this was my first main event final table, I was extremely confident that I could win that tournament that day. When we started Heads Up Play, I had David more than two to one in chips. And I had the eight of spades, eight of diamonds. My hand is very strong for Heads Up. Raymer bets two and a half million. And immediately, David Williams calls. He called immediately. And at that point, I, I was losing a lot of confidence in my hand. I really felt there was now a very good chance that, that he had the best hand. River card, another two. Now both players have full houses. I said, I'm all in. And before I could turn my head back to David, he had already said, I call, and was turning his hand over. And I was immediately thinking, oh, I've got to be beat. If he can call that fast, he can beat a pair of eights. Call. Oh. I'm looking at his hand and looking at the board, and how does he have me beat? And it's like, oh, wait, he doesn't have me beat. Yeah! It was just kind of a rush of primal emotion. Kind of like, you know, the caveman standing over the uh, antelope, you know? You've got your kill for the day and you're just, you know, yeah, you know, I did it. 
Those are the chips of Joseph Hashem trying to at least duplicate Raymer's post-championship main event run when he finished 25th, and Hashem doing a pretty good job this year. Once again, he's hooked up in a hand with Brian Hansen. Oh. Hashem calls a bet from Hansen. Mother! And loses. For Hashem, it's a constant battle to keep his temper under wraps. We saw Joe Please. double up through Hansen a while ago, and now he ships yes. some of those chips back to the World Series rookie. Nice river, sir. Story of my life. The story of his life is he won seven and a half million dollars last year. This year, someone's story will have a twelve million dollar ending. Let's go back to the feature table. A couple of new players. There is Ken Jacobs. We've seen him and his father, Tom, in the stand still rooting him on. And in seat three, Alex Azapema, 30-year-old pro player from Toronto. I'm going to take you out of the tournament by the end of the night. First, I got to double up, then take you out. We're going to dance tonight, buddy. <laughs> he, he needs a hug, man. He's not a happy guy. He needs a big old hug. I think Dimitri has a good read there. All right, the whole cards of Azapema, 8-5 offsuit. Not sure he can dance with those. He does fold. Over to Ken Jacobs. Pocket tens on the Milwaukee's best light pocket cam. Doyle and Todd Brunson are the only father-son combo to win World Series bracelets. I'm going to raise it. Maybe Tom and Ken Jacobs can become the first father and son to both make the main event final table. With those tens, he says raise it up. It's a total of 30,000 chips. Raised to Dimitri Nobles. Ace seven off suit. This hand loves me. This hand loves me. This hand right here. I hope it doesn't love him too much. Molly. Oh, there he goes again. Call. Goes and off. Jacobs makes the call. I guess he couldn't wait for a real hand. Dimitri, we hardly knew ye. Boy, Dimitri Nobles is covered by Jacobs, so Nobles tournament life at risk. Tom Jacobs likes what he sees from his son. His son in good position to knock off the ever-present Dimitri Nobles. Now the flop. Five ace queen. Yes. Nobles pairs his ace. I need a double up. Dimitri living on the edge. Hold, baby. Hold. Turn card now. Is a three. No help to Jacobs. Well, it's holding so far for Dimitri. Jacobs needs a 10 to knock out Nobles. River card oh. is an eight. Dimitri yes. Nobles wins the pot with it. aces and finds well, some new life. Right on time, right on time. Oh, I hope father taught son how to handle a bad beat. We have chronicled the roller coaster ride that is Dimitri Nobles. He got some chips there and hoping to get wow. on a hot streak. Buddy, if I play like that, I'd be on the ropes a long time ago, buddy. Well, you're not me. Nobody's Dimitri. It's too stressful. All right, let's get to the outer tables where 2005 champ Joseph Hashem is announced all in. Hashem was dealt pocket aces. The table folds around to the other end. Marcus Galser in the white there on the left has made the call. Next, Andrew Schreibman. He calls and he's got them both covered. I got the Rockets, baby! And Hashem shows the aces and almost lost one of them. Come on, let's see if the Rockets hold up. It's the first time I've had him in three days. So Hashem with an opportunity to triple up here. But he is one of the two players all in. And Galser caught in the crossfire here with little chance. Hashem with the aces, feeling pretty good about his chances, and why not? Well, no, if they get cracked. Well, as we know, Hashem hates to look. Come on, Hash. All right, three players to the flop. Schreibman in the blue has the pocket jacks, and he has both players covered. The flop with the jack! Schreibman takes control with a set. And now Hashem looks back. And he sees that his tournament is all but over. Schreiben doesn't want to watch, it seems, either. He's going to watch from the back row. Turn card is a three, means schreiben has got a full boat. And Joe Hashem now would need the case ace, or the defending champion is done. River card, and there it is! The knockout blow to the defending champion, Joseph Hashem. Good luck, everybody. Come on. Sorry, buddy. Schreibman knocked off Hashem and Balser with that hand. And that's how it ends on an outer court to a bad flop and the world champs pocket rockets are cracked. Joseph Hashem after his championship last year finishes in 238th place here in 2006. Not quite Raymer-esque but a great run in defense of his title.
Doyle Brunson joins the rest of the room in saluting Joseph Hashem, who now must pass the world championship title on to someone else. Good, good job. Thank you. Good to go that far. Yeah. I know, it's the worst day of the year when you go out. Good luck. Thanks. Doyle seems in a good mood. Must have had some milk and cookies this morning. Back inside the Rio Poker Room, and we find Daniel Negrano down to his last 43,000 chips, hooked up against David Wu. Well, that was a pretty grave look on Daniel's face. Daniel's been fighting it all day. I'm all in. And he moves all in. Queen, 10 of hearts. 43,000. Oh, man, I got a good hand. I don't get anything for knocking Daniel Negron. Nothing at all. Nothing. Other than a whole bunch of booze, buddy. <laughs> a whole bunch of booze and a tomato thrown at your head, two eggs thrown on the side of your face, oh, and man. your car gets keyed repeatedly. Boy, this is a tough call. Since we're buddies, you know. Oh, yeah. Says it's buddies. worth it. You're going to get booed, buddy. And he'll make the call. <laughs> I have nothing. I know. I'm suited. He had my suit. Ooh. Open He's it. got King Jack. I got Queen Ten of Hearts. And Daniel is behind for his tournament life. And Queen here we go to the flop. Red. 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 Wu hits his jack, and the road is steeper That's for bad. Daniel. I'm dead. Not dead yet, but close to it. Turn card is a seven. One more shot left for Negranu. <laughs> Daniel's going to need a queen and a queen only, or his day is done. It's a four, right, and Daniel well. Negreanu is gone. I want to rebuy so bad, you have no idea. <laughs> Boo. Boo. OK, where's my money? Daniel will earn almost $43,000, but certainly he goes away very disappointed. The guy in the green shirt did it. You get the eggs, Lon, I'll get the tomatoes. Let's move back to the featured table where the new story and old story has been the up and down ride of Dimitri Nobles. He has climbed back to respectability on the Milwaukee's best light pocket camp, George Danzer with Pocket Kings. <laughs> Whatever you call it. And reaching for chips. Player four raises, raises it up to 18,000. Player five. Players behind him fold over to Dimitri Nobles. Ace eight of diamonds. We saw Dimitri earlier go all in with a weaker ace against pocket tens. He shows restraint this time. Just makes the call. Two players fold behind Dimitri. So heads up once again, Nobles and Danzer. Danzer with the Kings has the lead. Here's our flop. It is eight, four, seven. Noble's got some help pairing his eight, but he needs more help. Danzer's style with Dimitri has been to give him enough rope to hang himself. He's played very soft, and there again, he checks. Dimitri pushes out 100,000 chips. And that is Dimitri's standard operating procedure. I'm all in. Player four is all in. Wow. Danzer putting Nobles to the test again. This would be for all of Dimitri's chips. A call. And there he goes. Just another awful call from Dimitri Nobles. Oh, God. Need some help. Need some help. He does indeed need some help. Need some help. Danzer has Nobles on the ropes again. Ace or eight. Eight. Here's the turn card. Oh! Ace! Yeah! is up for Dimitri to take yeah. the lead. <laughs> well, 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 the hand's not over, but I wouldn't blame Danzer for leaving. River card now Double is a blank, it, and Nobles Go does it. He doubles up. I sucked out again. It's meant, it's meant to be, baby. Maybe he is in the building. Oh, boy. Jeez. Woo! Dimitri Nobles does it Double again. It's meant to be, baby. CJ! Do and to George Dander's credit, he walks off the steam. Well played. Thank you. And comes back. Boy, he takes a lot of tough blows with a touch of class. The rumors of Dimitri's demise were greatly exaggerated. He is alive and kicking. Hey, I doubled up. I, I, I'm six more. Six more double ups, and I'm back from yesterday. Day four of the main event was moving day for many players. 
Hot shot Dimitri Nobles was almost out the door before talking and playing his way back in. Hey! Yeah! Yeah! I'm excited to still be in here. The poker gods are with me. While several of his peers climbed the ranks, yes! youth was not always served as some promising rookies were finally sent home. Oh, come on, not with me. The cards were cruel to even the best as Joseph Hashem and Daniel Negreanu said their farewells. It's over. That's all there is to it. But beware, there are still some big fish in the water. Ah! See you next time from the World Series of Poker.